Hello, my name is Finn O'Regan. I'm a former teacher and head teacher and currently a behaviour management consultant. ADHD is quite a complex condition. Having said that, the aim of this presentation is to demystify it for both parents and for families and to try and look at options for management for children who at this stage are suffering with this condition. ADHD is a term given to describe three main symptoms. Those are impulsivity, hyperactivity and inattention. There are three main types of ADHD. Type 1 is called predominantly inattentive type, where the predominant features here are inattentiveness. Type 2 is called hyperactive impulsive type, where here the predominant features are hyperactivity and impulsivity. And type 3 is called combined type, which has features of all three. The causes of ADHD are fairly established that this is a neurobiological condition. It is not caused by poor parenting or children just being naughty. There is much evidence to suggest that there is problems with dopamine receptors in the frontal lobes of the brain which result in some of the symptoms that people will call inattention, impulsivity and hyperactivity. The diagnosis of ADHD is quite a complex process and sometimes the routes to diagnosis can be very difficult for parents. Essentially two main pathways exist. Number one is going through the school system where the school and predominantly the SENCO will make a referral that the child will be diagnosed at some time. The second method is that parents should contact their GP and insist on a referral by the GP to a paediatrician or child psychiatrist who will be the people qualified to conduct the evaluation and diagnosis process. The impacts of ADHD on children and families um, will differ from individual to individual. Having said that, three main areas seem to be affected in most cases. Those would be the, to do with their education, the second one would be behavioural issues, and the third one would be socialisation. That means the issue of getting on both with peers, siblings and other individuals. Children with ADHD can struggle in school where the emphasis there is on concentration, listening and sitting still for quite long periods of time. Children with ADHD in essence have two main difficulties within the school community in terms of listening and learning. The main issue for them is that they have an extremely low threshold of boredom. If a child with ADHD is stimulated by the teacher teaching them, the subject matter, or the application of how the learning is taking place, that child will often be, be more than focused and sometimes will be over-focused. The problems occur when the child is not stimulated by what is going on and he or she then looks for other ways to stimulate them to get through the learning time that they've been asked to do. Very common comments made by teachers of children with ADHD or children who may have issues which may look like ADHD are that he can concentrate when he wants to. This to a some, some extent is confusing for people who look for consistency amongst children and think that if they can learn in one situation they should be able to learn in another. Having said this, children with ADHD can concentrate but it really depends on two main issues. It depends on what they're doing and who they're being taught by. In times of difficulty for these children, they will look to find different ways of getting through this experience. One very common feature is that children with ADHD will fidget. As opposed to telling children not to fidget, my advice for teachers throughout the country is to allow them to proactively fidget. By fidgeting, these children are much more likely to focus than by telling them not to.